I was asked, I was, this is a presentation that I uh, have given two times uh, previously uh, at the uh, wind car race um, in Stauning in Denmark um, almost a month ago. But then after that there was some, uh, I've been active on some uh, forum, forums on the, on the internet about uh, yeah, well, stuff like uh, energy conversion and vehicles and, and uh, something like that. So I was asked to give it again and then videotape it. So this is the session for a few of you who wanted to, to see this and then for the video cam in there. So uh, I am Mark Gauno and I, uh, the ideas I present here is uh, something I've did, uh, done in, uh, together with uh, some guys from DTU uh, in Lyngby in Denmark. It's the I and Robert Mikkelsen who are uh, part of the team, the wind car team. This is the last car, last year's wind car, which is, this is the race going for going directly against the wind by using a, a wind turbine. So, um, so the, the, the title of this talk is the aeromechanics of wind turbine cars, but then as it turns out the, the theory I, I will show you is, is a bit more general than this, so uh, I, actually a, more, a better title for this would be traveling in line with the wind using the wind because it can, it can be used just as well for going in the other direction, and you'll see that. So, I have started teaching a bit, and then what you should do when you teach, or give presentation, I've been told, is to give some questions for the audience, and, and I might have given some of this away earlier, but I'll just state it for you anyway. Well. Do you think it's possible to travel directly in the upwind direction? Well then, yeah, probably it is because we had a race with this, um, so that's fairly obvious maybe. It's, but but uh, is, it, is it possible to go faster than the wind itself using only the wind to move the vehicle directly in the upwind direction? That is, uh, people, many people would think that there would be a definitive upper limit for how fast you can go because for a wind turbine there is a, a definitive upper limit for what you can extract from the wind for a given size of it. So that's one question. And then a, 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 a more crazy uh, question would be do you think it's possible to travel directly in the downwind direction going along with the wind but faster than the wind itself using only the wind again? And then most people say no when they hear this, and uh, two professors uh, from Germany who were attending the, uh, the talk also said no, and I hope I had to have actually convinced them, or at least one of them, that it is possible. So uh, let's jump into the, uh, the presentation. So the outline of the talk is why I do anything like this, a little bit of historical remarks, I'm not too well versed in this, but uh, I have some, some historical stuff on this. Then also the main part of the talk is how does it work? Um, and then the interesting question, how fast will it go? Or how fast can we make it go? And uh, then this is uh, actually the, the forums I've been active in is more like what else can you do with it? And this is the long wind part of it that I'll get into there. And then I'll try to end it up and I'll I well, hope to not be taking more than 45 minutes of your time, but let's see. Why would we do it? Because we can. That's a simple one. one of the first ones. And at least in... Uh, that shouldn't have said practice. At least in theory we can make the students do all the hard work. But we didn't get much sleep uh, the last three weeks before the race. Why is this stuff uh, intriguing? I think it's probably okay. It's probably okay. It's probably. Uh, I'll just remove it. I think it was like like this. Don't you think? Okay, great. Uh, it's a great mind bender. So it's uh, it's a fun thing. At least if you're like a little bit uh, strange stuff. And uh, I mean the the reason of going through building a, a car, wind wind propelled car. Is really, it's, it's a big task. It does sound simple, but it's not. There's a very nice contest uh, arranged every year, or for the last two years at least, and so we had 
two cars for this race. And um, it's probably not something that we can be get, get too rich of. It's, uh, that's not the, the issue here. It's just for fun. So, history. Is it a new idea using a, uh, some sort of propeller uh, or a wind turbine to propel yourself? No, it's not. Um, I was brought uh, the, the, onto this, uh, this guy uh, from 1335 who thought up a machine like this who should uh, propel some kind of war machine using a, a wind turbine. And it's, uh, yeah, well, many, many years old. So it's not a new idea. So it's not like we're thinking thoughts nobody uh, ever did before. And this is also very old drawings. Someone wanting to use a Savonius type rotor, a drag based rotor to, to propel yourself uh, with. And uh, I think this is from a patent, old patent, a guy with a, who wanted to boost his bicycle by having a, a wind turbine there. I don't think it's going to work. It probably needs to be a little bit bigger. But And then, uh, as it turned out, I can re reveal to you now that the thing that one of the big blocks in, in the, our car is the transmission efficiency and I think this car would have a hard time in the, in the races too. So, old stuff. And actually people's, uh, people have done this with boats also. That seems a little, a little less uh, intuitive that you can do that. But uh, that was done in the late 60s and this AI, AIRS is I think Amateur Yacht Research Society. And you can actually make a boat, boat go upwind as well. Um, I'll show something later that actually shows that it doesn't matter between which two media that are moving relative to each other, you can make anything go. Provided that the, the, the losses are not too big. And then uh, Gustav Winkler is a German guy, built the first a uh, functional uh, headwind bicycle, uh, 92, and this is uh, Costa Vinca, and I'm not sure I spelled this thing correctly, but this is, uh, the wind is coming in, hitting the rotor, and then he has a gearing system, and then it's propelling him forward. So, um, so there, this is not the first of its kind either, and uh, other scientists doing that, so, so it's, uh, this is from 82. And then the, the really crazy idea is there was a guy, Andrew Bauer, who uh, in the ending of the uh, 60s wrote a, a paper on going faster than the wind with a rotor. And uh, so that's, uh, we're not the first to think these thoughts either. <laughs>